Okay, I'm gonna be my best authentic self today. Fuck. I do want to talk about a couple movies that inspired me this past month. I mean, I ha I haven't seen that. <laughs> <sighs> Why am I doing this? Why am I doing anything? My collar's straight. I don't know. I'm gonna look at myself in the camera while I fix my collar. I have some special lighting here. I'm gonna turn it off because it's giving me this weird green tint or not. Maybe I'm just seeing the green tint in my own eye because I'm staring at myself in the little viewfinder here on this camera that I've been using for way too long. I should really upgrade cameras. Hopefully I sound good too. I haven't used this Rode mic in a while. I need to find my brain. My, my brain is going away. Is, is it coming back? Is it coming back? I don't know if it's coming back. Um, I'm getting self-conscious about how I look and sound on camera because both of these movies got to me in a way that... Um, they both hit me in a deep place. Hey guys, uh, it's Kayla back with another video. The topic of today's video is being yourself. Being yourself can be hard. And it's like, aren't I always being myself? I was a complete mess when I was your age. Really? Eighth grade is the worst. Hey, 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 hey. When did you get Snapchat? What grade? Fifth grade. Is? Fifth grade? I did not grow up in the ubiquitous internet generation, necessarily. I didn't grow up with social media. In particular, I definitely didn't grow up with YouTube. I graduated high school like a couple months after YouTube premiered, long before anyone knew what a vlog was. Back when back when blog was still a fun, new, exciting buzzword. <laughs> I can't imagine growing up in a world that has known nothing but YouTube. I mean, if this kid's in eighth grade in the movie Eighth Grade, it's like thirteen years old. You know, yeah, it would be exactly thirteen years ago that YouTube premiered. So we have a new generation who has grown up completely in a world where vlogging is an accepted form of communication. I'm not saying that would have helped me if I, when I was that age, or, I mean, I'm pretty sure the only reason I got through high school is that I didn't know what other people were saying about me behind my back. I'm so glad I didn't have Facebook in high school. <sighs> yeah. And the great thing about eighth grade is that it's such a realistic kid. I mean, there's realistic acne and awkwardness, and like most people on camera, they stumble over their lines, and <clears throat> and like most people on camera, they stumble over their lines and go back and redo the lines. And, like, it's actually a lot of hard work to be authentic on camera. I don't know if many people realize that, but as someone who's done exactly that at, for a living for the last eight years, it um it hit hard. The weird pressures that are usually only afforded to like D-list celebrities have now been democratized and given to everybody. Eighth grade is about a person who has trouble expressing themselves and uses internet video as an outlet for their um own self-confidence. Can't relate at all. I should thank Bo Burnham for making a portrait of the internet that shows how, that shows what drives people to actually create on it. It's just this void to shout into. It's just this mirror to practice faces in. It's, it's this performance without a spectator. At its purest form, uh, the best vlogs are the ones that nobody watches. Admittedly, that's part of the reason why I started of uh, doing these videos. I mean, a small part. Yeah, it was about, you know, making jokes and talking about movies, but also it was just getting used to looking at my own face. You know, my own face with all the sweatiness. I sweat a lot in these videos. I'm taking this jacket off. Just getting used to my own face and how I presented myself and how I um, held myself just so I could get an idea of, of myself, of how I came off to people because I am odd and awkward. If you've ever met me in real life, you would probably know this. In fact, that's why in the last two years, I've been deliberately avoiding doing videos where I had to show my face. And um, it's partially why this year I've been doing as many vlogs as I have, because I just 
want to find that authenticity again. Authenticity. God, God awful word. Which leads into a perfect segue into Madeline's Madeline. Are there lights out there that don't make you sweat? Uh, in the comments, let me know if there are lights that don't make me, won't make me sweaty. I haven't seen Josephine Decker's other movies before this, but I did see her in a cameo at the end of a documentary. The Marina Abramovich documentary, The Artist is Present. For those of you who don't know the documentary, or Marina Abramovich, she is a performance artist who sat in MoMA and had people sit across from her and react to her, completing this performance piece, The Artist is Present. Near the end of the run of this performance piece, one member of the audience got in the chair with her and stripped naked in order to be closer to her, in order to match her presence. You know, I wanted it to be like my own thing and special with her, and I thought in that space, in that square, like you get your own, you know, it's like the, the audience is part of the art, you know, and, and, and we bring to it. And I just wanted to be as vulnerable to her as she makes herself to everyone else. So, um, apparently that person makes movies. Um, as a creator, I would say, I grew more, I think, on this movie than I have on any other film. So after Josephine Decker's, um, trolling? No. Photobombing. After Josephine Decker photobombed Marina Abramovic's performance piece, she started doing a lot of uh, short video projects and documentaries, which are all about uh, delving into the weird authenticity problems that film as a medium presents. And this movie, Madeline's Madeline, is about a young actress named Madeline who meets an, um, what's a good word? Ambitious theater director? And the young star, Helena Howard, um, who is fantastic. She, she needs the best career possible after this movie. Josephine Decker's wanted to make this movie starring this young actress, and... In doing so, she made a movie about the impossibility of its own making, because it's about a young actress who is swept up by a theater director who believes in her so much and wants to support her so much that they start making this performance piece, this installation piece, this long project based on a character that Madeline creates, which increasingly looks like Madeline's own life. <sighs> Again, performance and authenticity. I'm not sure if Josephine Decker implied it to resonate um, on a social media level, but a review of it, I believe it was by David Ehrlich of IndieWire, said that the movie works in an age where identity is blood sport. <laughs> Just the act of being a person online can be so draining and exhausting, and draining and exhausting means the same thing. <sighs> I'm the smart one. <sighs> it's been a while since I've seen a movie that actually acknowledges that, and acknowledges that real emotional toll that's paid on performers to, um, to find their authentic self or create a character that's believable. I was a theater kid. I majored in theater in college. I don't know if that's obvious. I mean, I mean, how can you look at my channel and not think former theater kid? I mean, I spent all that time talking about Shakespeare and doing little mini musicals and obviously. And of course, I am a ham who talks like a ham person and looks like a ham person. Again, it's it's weird doing this performance and trying to be authentic when I can actually see myself in the viewfinder right there and I'm just I immediately start, you know, adjusting myself and <sighs> self-perception. This is a vlog about vlogging and why I hate vlogging and why I need to do vlogging more. <sighs> but Madeline's Madeline is a great movie about the director-actor relationship and how dangerous that can be when when unquestioned, when unexamined. It means even more in this age where everyone has a camera and everyone has access to this platform that can reach the entire globe and everyone is struggling to be their authentic self online. 
to build a personality that's also a brand, which I have not been great at, let's face it. I once had an acting teacher describe acting as being an emotional athlete, and that really stuck with me. The actual craft of acting is about performing the illusion of these deep, profound emotions and actually coming through them unharmed. I'm pretty sure a lot of young actors have fallen into that trap where their character and their um, personality have gotten too intertwined. I'm sure a lot of professional actors have fallen into that trap. Jared Leto, Johnny Depp for the entirety of his career, let's face it. Because it's a lot to get up in front of a camera or an audience or anyone and say, I want my skin to melt off. I, I'm too cowardly to kill myself. I imagine myself uh, reduced to dust and stopping up a barrel somewhere. Oh, by the way, my name's Hamlin. I'm a prince of Denmark. My father was killed. Blah, blah, blah. It's different to get up in front of an audience and say that and to actually feel those feelings and have them like, take a daily toll on you. I wonder if I should do that again because I wasn't happy with the reading I just gave of the metaphor I just used. And here I am, again, worrying about how I come across. Am I too sweaty? Am I too... Um, am I fidgeting with my hair too much? Is the light catching my glasses? I really hope this is a trend in movies. Like a trend that either acknowledges outright or subtly uh, the pressures that are put on people to perform online now that everyone is performing, now that everyone has an online presence, now that everyone sits in front of a camera. Yeah, In my last video, I let that angst uh, really get to me. If you haven't seen my last video, uh, link wherever it is. I honestly think that in the next couple of years, we will deal with this cinematic reckoning of our understanding of acting as a craft and the art of being in front of a camera and how much more credit we should give actors than, say, directors. I know I've made more than one video now about how much I hate auteur theory. My real problem with it is that it's too director-focused and not actor-focused. We need more respect for acting and actors. So yeah, see Madeline's Battle in, in theaters when you can. See Eighth Grade if you haven't already. Already. The vlogging takes a lot of work. Vlogging takes a lot of work to feel authentic and present and like a human being. It is shockingly difficult to appear like a human being. But you haven't found me out yet! And then I rip off my skin and I become a lizard person. That would be a good way to end the vlog, but that would require doing, like, effects. <sighs> Steadily declining mental health And laugh as he attempts to give you what he cannot give himself I don't think that I can handle this right I don't think that I can handle this right But they don't even know the